Deleting a record from a database is part of the CRUD process of a dynamic website. Unlike a word processor, there is no undo. Deletions are permanent unless a backup exists, which can be used to restore data. Therefore, deletions should only be allowed by someone who is authorized or limited to delete only their own data. A delete is nearly identical to an update and is a two-step process. Step 1. Begin the delete and deliver data to a view for confirmation that the correct data is to be removed. Did I mention that a delete cannot be undone? You want to be sure. Step 2. Process the delete and report the result back to the client's browser. Because we are using a model view control architecture, the process is distributed across the controller, a model, and some views. Because the delete and update are so alike, much of the code was copied and edited from the update code that already exists. The vehicle delete view was saved from the vehicle update view. Most of the form fields were removed, leaving only the make, model, and description. All of these fields were then made read-only in the form. One of the two hidden inputs that existed were edited to represent the delete process, while the one holding the unique key value was left unaltered. All other text and values in the view were edited to represent a delete instead of an update. With the view created, we next move to the controller. In the controller, two new control structures are needed. The first is triggered when the delete process begins and queries the data in order to display it in the delete view. The second control structure carries out the delete. Just as with other processes, the delete case statement control structure must match the trigger value in the delete view. Only three values are collected and used. One is necessary to carry out the delete, that being the unique key, while the other two are used to report outcomes back to the browser. No error checking is done as the delete will either work or not. There is nothing to correct since the client should not send any of their own values. This is a false statement potentially, but we'll keep it simple for now. A new model-based delete function is called and the result checked and the message created, stored in the session, and the views are sent. Lastly, in the model, the new delete function was written that requires only the unique key for the item to be deleted as a parameter. That value is used in the SQL WHERE clause to limit the delete to the single record. With the code and process overviewed, let's see it in action. The management view is restricted to administrative users, so logging in as an administrator is required. Find a vehicle and click the delete link. An item's delete process has begun. The item's values are displayed in the delete view. Notice that none of the values are editable. Looking at the source code, the values of the hidden inputs are checked. Clicking the Delete Submit button should result in being returned to the Vehicle Management view and an appropriate message being displayed. If the delete was successful, a check of the database should reveal that the record is gone. With the delete comes an interesting phenomenon, holes in primary key values in the database table. There is frequently a desire to go back and fill in those missing values. Don't! Our database is capable of holding billions of records. Having gaps in the numbering is not an issue. That's it! If you can code an update, you can code a delete. The similarity between these processes is very strong.